Hey guys, here we are in part two of our unit on stoichiometry. Uh, this is going to be a short one because all we're going to talk about today is limiting reactants and how to calculate percent yield. So limiting reactants, uh, they're important when chemists are doing a reaction. Uh, one of the reactants usually runs out before the other one. It's very much like building a bicycle. So we're going to build a bicycle. Here's our formula for building a bicycle. You have one frame plus two wheels make one bicycle. All right, so how many bikes can you make if you have two frames and six wheels? This is what limiting is about. So I think you could figure this out. Um, please excuse my artwork here, but if we have two frames, Here's one, here's two, here's a seat. Uh, we have six wheels, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can only make two complete bicycles. What is limiting us from making a third bicycle? What are we missing here? We don't have enough frames. So the limiting in chemistry would be called a reactant, but here we're talking about bicycles. So the limiting would be the frames. The frames limit us from making more bicycles. What do we have extra of? We call it excess. We have two extra wheels. So this is exactly what happens in a chemical reaction. Let's say we have this reaction here. We start with 10 grams of hydrogen, 20 grams of nitrogen. How many grams of ammonia can we make? Let's identify the limiting reactant and the excess. So what I like to do here is I'm just going to write down our quantities. So we have 10 grams of hydrogen. We have 20 grams of nitrogen. And we're trying to figure out how many grams of ammonia we're going to make. So here's how we do these problems. Basically, it comes down to two stoichiometry problems. First, we're going to start with hydrogen, and then we'll do nitrogen. So let's just figure out, first of all, if we have 10 grams of hydrogen, how much ammonia can we make? This is step one. OK, so we start with 10 grams. Again, grams equals molar mass times moles. Get to moles first. Get to moles first. I'm going to do it this way just to save some time, make it neater. I'm going to do it in one long stoichiometry problem. So if we have grams up top, uh, we need the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 2. 2 grams of hydrogen is 1 mole. So this is how we get to moles. It's the same thing as doing grams equals molar mass times mole. Now you take the grams and you divide it by the molar mass. But I'm just going to keep going here. This is moles of hydrogen. So now comes our mole ratio step. Our mole ratio, we want the 3 for the hydrogen on the bottom. 3 moles of hydrogen are equivalent to 2 moles of ammonia. That's what we're looking for, ammonia. Okay, and then finally we're looking for grams of ammonia. It says right here we're looking for grams. So if we have moles of ammonia here, we have one mole of ammonia is equivalent to the molar mass, uh, which is going to be 17. Uh, when you're doing the molar mass, remember, don't count the coefficients. They do not count in the molar mass. We're just doing NH3, which is going to be 17. And that's grams. That's the molar mass, 17 grams per mole. All right, so we do this math. We have 10 times 2 times 17 equals 340 on top. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 340 divided by 6 is 56.7. Grams. So if we started with 10 grams of hydrogen, we'd end up making 56.7 grams of ammonia. 
Okay, because this is a limiting problem, we have two quantities for our reactants, so we have to do them both. So here is part two. This time the problem becomes, if we have 20 grams of nitrogen, how many grams of ammonia we're going to make? This is part two. See what we're doing here? We have to do this twice with each of our reactants. Okay, so we're going to start with the 20 grams of uh, nitrogen. And let's do our stoichiometry. The molar mass of N2 is 14 times 2 is 28. Grams is 1 mol of nitrogen. Let's just keep going. Second step is always the mole ratio. So we have the moles of nitrogen here. So this is going to be a 1. We want the 1 on the bottom. And again, because we're looking for ammonia, we're going to put the 2 up top. Okay, and now that we have moles of ammonia, one mole is equivalent to 17 grams. This is the molar mass of NH3. Do the math. 20 times 1 times 2 times 17, 680. Remember, I'm just multiplying across, and then 28 times 1 times 1 is 28. We come out with 24.3. Okay, so now that we've done both our calculations, what we do is we look at these numbers. Whichever one is the smallest, this is the smallest one, 24.3 is smaller than 56.7. So our limiting reactant is the nitrogen. By contrast, the excess reactant is going to be the other one, the H2. Okay, so how many grams of ammonia we're going to make? This is our answer. We're only going to make 24.3 grams because the nitrogen is going to run out first. We have tons of extra hydrogen, but we're going to end up running out of nitrogen first. Once we run out of nitrogen, that's it. The reaction stops. It's over. So whatever is the smaller of the two, that's your answer. This came from the nitrogen. Nitrogens are limiting. We're going to end up making 24.3 grams of ammonia. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, here's a nice combustion reaction. Uh, we're going to start off with 200 grams of NaCH4. This is methane. I'm just going to put that up here just so I know. We have 500 grams of the O2. And we are interested in water. How much water we can, can we produce? We're going to do this in grams. How much water? All right, two steps, two separate problems, actually. Let's start off with CH4. We have 200 grams. Get to moles first. Get to moles first. Uh, the molar mass of CH4 is 12 plus 4, 16. Uh, 16 grams of uh, CH4 is one mole CH4. Okay, second step, so was our mole ratio. We have the CH4 on top, so we need the CH4 on the bottom. This is a 1. And we're interested in the water, so that 2 goes up top. That's our mole ratio step. And then finally, we're looking for grams of this. So we need a molar mass, uh, 1 mole of water. The molar mass of water is 18 grams per mole. Do the math. 200 times 1 times 2 times 18. That comes out to 7200 divided by 16. We come up with 450 grams of water. All right, let's see what happens when we have 500 grams of oxygen. 500 grams 
of O2. Get it into moles. Get to moles first. Molar mass of oxygen, 16 times 2. 32 grams is one mole of oxygen. Mole ratio step. Uh, we have oxygen, so this is the 2. We're going to put the 2 on the bottom. And again, we're interested in the water, so the 2 goes up top. And then finally, convert back to grams. One mole of water is 18 grams. Do the math. 500 times 1 times 2 times 18. This is 18,000 divided by 32 times 2 is 64, 281. Okay, so now you got to figure out which is smaller. I think you realize it's this one. This is a smaller number. That's smaller than 450. So oxygen, this came from the oxygen. Okay, that's the calculation we did. So oxygen is our limiting. The oxygen is going to run out first. We're never going to make 450 grams. There will be excess. CH4. These problems are not difficult at all. Uh, so doing percent yield, I think we've kind of done these before. Percents are always part over the whole. Uh, so in this case, uh, what it is, is we use our theoretical amount, goes on the bottom. This formula is on your formula sheet. The experimental amount is on the top. And then we're doing percents, so you always multiply by 100. Uh, so you'd have to be given some more information here. Our theoretical amount is the 281. Let's say in the lab, you did this reaction and you actually got 250 grams of water. Okay, so in the lab, you did this experiment, you got 250 grams of water. So your experimental, experimental amount is 250. Do this math. 250 divided by 281. This would be an 89% yield. This is percent yield. Okay. Uh, remember, you'd have to be given this experimental amount in the question to be able to do this problem. And that's all you would do. You would just divide it by the theoretical amount. That's it. Limiting reactions. Very simple. You're just doing two stoichiometry problems, picking the one that has the least amount of product that you're going to make, and that becomes your limiting piece of cake.